Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I have a special recipe to make. Uh, it's, I'm gonna be making tre le tres leches capirotada, which is a special dessert that we make in Mexico during Easter. And, but it, it requires a lot of items to it. Um, I was able to get some of the items because due to the quarantine, I cannot go to different stores. So whatever I found, that's what I found. So for this, we're gonna need some bread. This is the bread I found. We have cranberries, raisins, uh, some dry mango that I'm gonna chop. And then we have uh, mixed fruits, dry mixed fruits. We have some peanuts and then pecans and to do our and then sprinkles this is the best i could find for sprinkles i can go to the mexican store so and we're going to prepare our juice with some cloves anise piloncillo to make it a little bit sweet we have half and half La lechera, which is sweet, and evaporated milk, and some cinnamon. So first of all, I put the oven on because I'm gonna cut the bread. So we're gonna start by uh, boiling a cinnamon. So I put a one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm gonna put the anise and the cloves, maybe like three cloves. We're gonna let it boil, get the water, get the flavor. And in the meantime, I already put the oven on. I'm gonna cut my bread. Because you see, this is one bread and I slide it down in thin pieces so we can put it in the oven. So I cut the bread, put it in a sheet, cooking sheet. Then I'm gonna put it on the oven to let it get toasty. I have all my bread there. I cut about five breads. I'm gonna let them get toasty. For I'm gonna chop my dry mango and I mix first so they have a tiny squares. Okay, I chop my man dry mango, dry kiwi, dry papaya, dry apricot, and dry pineapple. And this has some raisins and cranberries together with this one that I'm gonna add. This is how the water looks after you let it boil. The smells is so good. Gonna let it the water get a little bit darker. Then I'm gonna add my piloncillo. Now the oven, some of the bread is getting toasty, so we're gonna take it out. Once the bread is toasty, you take it out. We're gonna leave the oven on. We're not gonna turn it off because we need it for our next step. While we wait for our bread to cool down, this is our, oh, look at this. We're gonna put a piloncillo, which is um, cane sugar. So we're gonna leave it together for our next step we're gonna need some butter so you're gonna grab some butter like that and you're gonna spread it all around our pan our baking pan so we're gonna do it like that we're doing this to make sure our bread doesn't get stuck to the pan. 
Okay, this is how it looks after you put the butter all around. Now we're going to be setting our bread, making layers of bread. So I have some cheese as well. And I suppose to, uh, I like to put coconut, but I don't have any, any coconut, so we're going to do it without coconut. So you start putting your bread like that. Lay it down. Kind of like if you are making a lasagna, <laughs> but instead of pasta, we're putting um, bread. You put your bread, you can add a little bit of cheese to it, to the layer of bread, a little bit of cheese. I'm gonna put another layer of bread on top. Like that, we're gonna cover it all. So I put another layer of bread. I'm gonna put cheese again. And here is where we're gonna start adding some pecans. Okay, so I'm gonna put some peanuts okay. mm. and some cranberries. Let's spread it all around. Some raisins. Some raisins. We can put more pecans. And then we can put some of our fruit, like some of the mango, some of the dry mango. Spread it around. Some of our kiwi. Some of our kiwi and papaya. Applicants, well, whatever make, uh, dry fruits that you have, you can add. Pineapple, mm. Now we're gonna put another layer of bread. Yeah, I added my other layer of bread, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add everything again. This is how it looks after I finish. I put some cheese. If I had coconut, I'll put shredded coconut, but I don't have any. I decorated it with the dry mango on top. And this is how the our juice look. Now we're gonna prepare this. Okay, I transfer our cinnamon. It's a little bit hard still, but oh well. I'm gonna add my evaporated milk. Maybe half. I'm gonna add some of the half and half. It's good to do it when it's warm, so the lechera is easy to mix, you see? Mix it properly. So this is our three leches. A little bit more of half and half. Okay. And this is how our capirotada looks before we put it in the oven. So now, we are going to pour some of our mixture into the capirotada. Make sure that you pour it all around very nice before we put it in the oven. Every corner so that the bread is nice and wet all around. So once you make sure everything is nice and wet, now we are gonna put it in the oven. Look at how it looks. Mm. 
it looks super good. So now we're gonna put our capirotada in the oven. We're gonna close it and leave it there for about 10 minutes. I think our capirotada is ready to be out of the oven. So I'm gonna turn off the oven and take it out. It is, it is out. Oh my God. I wish you guys can smell it. It smells delicious. So our final step is the sprinkles. <laughs> you decorated the capirotada with the sprinkles. The reason why I don't put it before because then it changes it after. Sammy, look at the capirotada. This is the capirotada. Mm. It smells so good. Uh, this dish probably has one million calories. <laughs> Because it has a lot, it has the evaporated milk, the half and half, the lechera, all the dry fruit and the bread. But as I told you, this meal we only eat it once a year in Mexico to celebrate Easter. And it's super delicious, it smells so good. Now we're going to cut a little piece and our friend here, Sammy Boy, will taste it. I'm going to cut a little piece here to give some mm, now Sam is gonna taste some capirotada a little bit hot still mm. what do you think that's super good what do you think that's super good it's yummy yummy <laughs> a little piece um, the pecans and the peanuts are super good when you bite it thank you so much for watching I hope you guys like this complicated recipe there's a lot of steps and a lot of things but as I told you we only eat it once a year for Easter so this is kind of like a special food for us and it reminds me when I was a little girl and going to my grandma's house with my cousins, my uncle, and all the family gets together. So it brings me a lot of good memories. And I just like, I made it so my kids can get a little piece of my culture and what I grew up eating. I wish you guys could eat a little piece. It's so delicious. Thank you for watching. May God bless you. Yummy, yummy. Bye-bye.